In some parts of the world, boating is a seasonal sport, requiring storage for an extended period of time. Temperature and humidity changes while in storage can cause corrosion of internal and external engine parts if they are not protected. Module 14 examines the procedure to properly prepare Evinrude and Johnson outboards for storage. Following this procedure will protect the engine and simplify the pre-season servicing procedure. Also, this is an opportunity to schedule needed repairs so the boat will be ready for the next boating season. Left untreated, fuel will go stale in a few weeks. The fuel system should be stabilized with 2 plus 4 fuel conditioner following the instructions on the can. Adding 2 plus 4 fuel conditioner to the fuel tank during the last hours of operation ensures the fuel system will be stabilized. Otherwise, add 2 plus 4 fuel conditioner when performing the off-season storage procedure. Operate the engine at 1500 RPM for 5 minutes to stabilize the entire fuel system. If you are using a flushing device, remove the propeller before starting the engine to prevent contact with rotating parts. Remember, before working on any component that could turn the flywheel, remove the spark plug leads to prevent the engine from accidentally starting. Remove the propeller. Reattach the spark plug leads. Before starting the engine, be sure there is ample water supply to the outboard. This will prevent water pump and power head damage. Run the engine to stabilize the fuel system. Always keep the engine under 1500 RPM when using a flushing device to prevent power head damage. Because there is no back pressure on the exhaust system, the engine will run lean. Fill the oil tank with the recommended oil to reduce or prevent condensation from forming during the storage period. On four-stroke models, change the crankcase oil. Drain the crankcase while the oil is warm. If the outboard has an oil filter, change it. Refill with Evinrude Johnson Ultra Four-Stroke Oil. It is very important that the bearing surfaces be coated with clean oil before entering a period of storage. Be sure to run the engine after changing the oil. Use storage fogging oil to protect internal components during storage. A maintenance valve is built into the primer solenoid on many carbureted outboards. Connect a pressurized injection can of storage fogging oil to the maintenance valve. Run the engine at a fast idle. Do not exceed 1500 RPM. The storage fogging oil is conveniently injected into the crankcase and all of the cylinders at once. For outboards without a primer solenoid, including direct injection and four-stroke models, use a pressurized non-injection can of storage fogging oil. You must spray the storage fogging oil through each carburetor or throttle body into the intake manifold. Read and follow the instructions on the can and in the operator's guide. Stop the engine. If you are preparing a four-stroke or a carbureted two-stroke model, remove the spark plugs. Spray a liberal amount of storage fogging oil into each spark plug hole. Rotate the flywheel several revolutions in the correct direction. This distributes the fogging oil throughout the cylinders and drains excess water from the outboard. Examine the spark plugs and clean or replace them. Gap, install and tighten the spark plugs to the specifications in the operator's guide. Reattach the spark plug leads. The spark plugs on direct injection models should not be disturbed until they are replaced. These spark plugs must be indexed following the procedure in the appropriate service manual. Clean or replace the fuel filter or filters. Inspect the entire boat's steering system for damage due to corrosion, aging, abuse, or lack of maintenance. Inspect mechanical steering cables for deterioration or cracks. Inspect hydraulic steering systems for fluid leaks or other external signs of problems. Follow the steering system manufacturer's maintenance and lubrication recommendations. 
Examine the shift and throttle cables for deterioration. Clean and lubricate the cables. Check the fluid level of the power trim and tilt reservoir. Add fluid if necessary following the procedure in the operator's guide. Remove the battery from the boat. Check its condition, water level and charge. Store the battery in a cool, dry place out of direct sunlight. Check the water level. Periodically charge the battery during storage. Check the propeller for damage. A slightly bent propeller blade can hardly be noticed, but it will affect the performance of the engine. Check for and remove any fishing line from the propeller shaft or fish line trap. Clean the propeller shaft and lubricate it with triple guard grease. Install the propeller following the procedure in the operator's guide. It's a good practice to change the gear case lubricant before storage. Contaminants in the lubricant could corrode internal parts. Drain the gear case. If there are any signs of water in the lubricant, pressure and vacuum test the gear case. Refill the gear case with Ultra HPF gear case lube. If the gear case is equipped with a speedometer tube, disconnect the speedometer hose at the upper connection. Using air pressure less than 25 psi, blow all water from the gear case speedometer pickup. Reconnect the hose after all water is removed. Lubricate all fittings and linkages with triple guard grease. Carefully examine the power head. Check for any loose, missing or worn fasteners. Check the electrical and ignition systems for misplaced leads or damaged parts. Be sure the starter solenoid terminal boot and all connectors are in place. Check the oil and fuel systems for deterioration. Make sure fasteners and clamps are tight and in good condition. Failure to repair electrical, ignition and fuel system components could cause electrical sparks and fuel leakage under the engine cover. This could result in a fire or explosion. Spray the power head and its components with anti-corrosion spray. Replace the engine cover. Clean off any marine growth from the outboard. This is a good time to touch up the paint and apply a coat of automotive wax to the exterior of the outboard. Store the outboard on the boat or an engine stand in a vertical self-draining position. If the outboard is equipped with a portable fuel tank, disconnect the fuel hose from both the outboard and the fuel tank. To reduce the risk of fire and explosion, Store all portable fuel tanks in a well-ventilated area, away from any sparks or open flames. If the outboard is removed from the boat, examine all hardware you loosened or removed from the outboard and its control systems. Replace damaged or missing items with genuine replacement parts. These fasteners are made of special materials to resist weakening and corrosion. Do not replace these fasteners with hardware that merely looks the same. Place the hardware in a bag and fasten it to the outboard. Failure to carefully reattach the outboard and its control systems with factory specified hardware can result in sudden unexpected loss of boat control. If the outboard cannot be stored in the recommended vertical position, be sure the cooling system is drained completely. Never place the gear case higher than the power head. Any water remaining in the exhaust passages can drain into the cylinders and cause serious damage. Do not lay the outboard on the shift lever. The weight of the outboard could damage or break the lever. Most four-stroke models must be laid on a specific side to prevent crankcase oil from running out of the outboard or into the cylinders. Refer to the operator's guide. It's important to fully prepare an outboard for off-season storage. The result will be many years of reliable service. Furthermore, you and your customer will know the outboard is ready for action next season.